Wednesday night, 8 p.m. That means we are at the Wall Street Pub and Grill for the Tiffin Dragon Football Radio Show. Russ Knight, a voice of the Dragons, alongside head coach Chris Reiser. Coach, how are you doing tonight? Doing awesome. Thanks again for having us. Why don't you introduce your two student athletes sitting there to your left? If yeah, no, please. good night. We have uh, Gavin Woods, uh, one of our wide receivers, had a great year to date. We have Carrington Conti, uh, one of our defensive backs, safeties, had an awesome year to date. So excited to have these guys here tonight. Thanks for coming out, fellas. Appreciate you guys being a part of the program. I'm sure uh, when Coach says, uh, come on now, you can get some wings or something, it probably is an easy sell to get you guys to come here tonight. But either way, thanks for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. We'll get to meet you guys here in a little bit. We'll go through the uh, last week's game, get ready for this week. Then we'll get to meet you guys a little bit, talk about uh, your uh, roles on the team and some of the guys you work with here in a little bit. But first, let's take a look back at last week. Coach Alderson brought us in town, the Battlers, and uh, the Dragons didn't take long to get on the scoreboard. Yeah. They were the first uh, what is it, one play, 93-yard drive. They have uh, the long pass to Devin yeah. Butler. And Devin Butler has, uh, the last few weeks, been making some big plays for you this year, Coach. Yeah, no, he's starting to come on. Um, I think he's really starting to get more experienced than our offense, which right. is huge. You know, he's starting to get more comfortable. And so, no, it was um, it was a deal. I think that was our second series. Defense got a good stop in their first series, and we were able to get the football back, and, and uh, we were backed up. But um, got a one-on-one, and Nick made a really good throw. We protected it, and Devin made a good play, and then kind of took it to the house, which makes that second play call a lot easier. I'm sure it does. PAT, right? I'm so. sure it does. Yeah, I, a lot of the gaps, Coach, you got to help me fill in this week. Because I was, uh, a lot of times we go to commercial, I've been running here, there, this no place. Doubt. No doubt. Jerry running all over the place on Saturday, too. So we it. didn't get to concentrate as much on the game, but we got through it. Yep. Just like you guys did. Sometimes everything doesn't go your way. No you got to figure out a way to fight through and get through to get to the victory. There's right? no doubt about it. Well, you guys did a great job, as <laughs> always. So, no, and I thought, I thought again, I thought it was a good atmosphere in Frost Cow now, right? We want to continue to make it better right. um, and we're working diligently to do that we've got a great group of guys to have people come support and and each it's gotten better I think our game day staff's done an awesome job and it's really a cool atmosphere for families with young kids come out and watch right. us play and so uh, obviously you guys being a big part of that so we want to keep building that keep that going got a lot of recruits there on Saturday as well too yeah. over 100 kids yeah. yeah no we're excited about the future of our program and you know we're excited about the future of Tiffin in general right like the right. community's thriving our university's thriving and and I think recruits understand that, see that, and want to be a part of it. And so we're just trying to do our, our small part and help keep that kind of tradition rolling. It doesn't hurt when the kids come in and see young men like this participate on the field, does it? There's no doubt. No, I tell recruits all the time, the only bad thing about a game day visit is you don't get to meet our players. Right, right. And, right. and I brag on our guys all the time. They're the most important part of our program. They are our program, right? And so I think when, when recruits come in and they get to sit down with guys like Carrington and guys like Gavin, I think this place sells itself even right. more than that. You know, right. and so it's, that's one of the cool things we have the offer. Well, uh, let's talk together here for a second. We mentioned Devin Butler's name at that long touchdown catch. He's somebody you've only known for a couple months, really. So talk about what he's added to our receiving core for you guys. No, when Devin came in, it was a great asset to our offense. Uh, he's really helped me out coming from a D1 program, taught me a lot of things I could right. learn from him, and then obviously competing against him in practice and making our defense better. Let's say competition only makes you better, right? You right. guys got a pretty good group of athletes there in that wide receiving group. Most definitely, yeah. You get to work at Carrington. You get to work against these young men as well in practice. Talk about a little bit from your perspective what Devin's brought to the team coming here this year. Uh, he challenged, like, I'm not going to say he's challenged the receivers to get better, but he's definitely made them work more. And they just gather together and just keep working. And it makes us DBs work every day. Well, you're going to have to with that group. Definitely. You're going to have to for certain. Definitely. Well, the Dragons not only throw touchdown passes to the wide receivers and running backs, they also throw them to tight ends as well. And yeah. Spencer Moyer in the first quarter got a chance to get in the end zone, a 13-yard pass from Nick Watson, a six-play, 59-yard drive, taking 240 off the clock. And at that point, the Dragons, just before the end of the quarter, sitting with a two-touchdown lead. Yeah, no, Spencer, two weeks in a row, right? Yeah, yeah that was mm-hmm. fun. No, it's cool. Those guys are kind of the kind of uh, the, the unsung heroes of our offense, our yeah. tight ends. And so to be able to reward those guys a couple weeks in a row, and get them in the end zone and when one of them score they all feel like they score right. you know and so it's a cool group they've got a nice camaraderie and so we're excited for them and and uh it's always good to kind of be able to throw them a bone well the tight ends are kind of like i always look at the tight ends as kind of like the middle linebackers of the offense they kind of have a bit of a mean streak in yeah. them a little bit because yeah. you got you know, a whole lot of blocking more than yeah. those pass catching no you're, tight you're definitely a multifunctional guy yeah. and you got to be able to be a run first tight end in our offense and they've done that they've they've embraced it and they don't say boo and then when they do get a chance they go out and they make it happen so it was cool for that to happen two weeks in a row which yeah, certainly wasn't planned and, and uh, good players make good plays sometimes and make you look good. Right, I just got to tell a quick story as we talk about 
I did as my internship I did at Sporting News Radio in Chicago. This is when Tony Gonzalez was playing. He yeah. was he was uh, contracted to be on the on the air with us yeah, 20 yeah. minutes after his game's completed. And it was my job to call his cell phone and be like, "Hey, Tony, great game today, man. Uh, hold on, we'll get you on the air in a little bit." So every Sunday for my internship back in 2003, I got to talk to Tony Gonzalez on the That's phone. Awesome. So that was pretty cool. That's well, awesome. awesome. That's <laughs> a cool guy. Drag is a 14 zip lead after one quarter of play. Then Alderson Broadus gets on the board. A young man who was did not start the game for running back at the running back position for them, but Nicholas Bishop. I thought he came in and ran the ball hard for all. Some balls and did a pretty good job for them. He got in the end zone on a 13 yard run. The Dragons' lead was cut to seven. But I thought that young man came off the bench and ran hard for them. He did, yeah, 41. No, he yep. did. He um, he ran hard. You know, he was good on their special teams too. Yeah. You know, so I, he was a pretty good player and certainly uh, <laughs> certainly made our guys made our guys work to tackle him. That's for sure. And obviously we did. But um, but yeah, I thought he I thought he was a good player and, and there was a was a was a bright spot for them. Carrington, when you are facing a team that reviews a couple multiple different running backs, what kind of challenges does that put for you guys? especially if they're two different style running backs. Bishop came in, the second guy in for them last week, a lot bigger than their starting running back, and ran with a little bit more power. How do you have to, uh, what do you have to do differently? How do you prepare for more than one running back? Uh, well, we have different calls for the defense, and we adjust different backs, but also as well is we tackle different backs different. Like, if a back's 220, I'm probably not going to up top. Right, you know, I hear it, yeah. So, I mean, we adjust and we get it done. With our D-line, it makes it very easy. Yeah, yeah that, that helps. That helps. We're on the back end of the defense. Those big guys up front taking care of their business makes your job a whole lot easier. Definitely. And I was talking to uh, Carrington before we came on the show here, Coach, and I was talking about a couple weeks in a row, he's really came up and did a great job of throwing on a little uh, dump pass to the running back and brought down a, a defense, or offense, offensive player for a negative yardage play a couple weeks in a row. Yeah, no doubt. No, Carrington's being humble, and that's why I love him. But <laughs> but he, he's had a terrific year for us. And he is he is similar. We talked about tight ends, right? Carrington has an innate ability to play the run and also play the pass, right? And so when you have a safety that can be equally effective in, in, in both areas from a defensive coordinator standpoint, from a coach's standpoint, it does give you a little bit of free wheel in what right. you can do with that young man. And so what we've been able to do defensively is kind of expand our package because of the versatility of Carrington and some of our other defensive backs. And, um, and it certainly allows you to be more creative. Sure. You know, it allows you to be a a bit more, uh, a bit more um, unknown, right, for yeah. the offense, and and he's done a terrific job, kind of spearheading our effort there. And you, you played linebacker in high school, right? Yeah, I played linebacker. That's probably where that comes from, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, well, here's a guy I'm sure you're happy you don't have to put, uh, tackle any more than occasionally in the practice field, Jaquan Hardy. 24-yard touchdown run for the Dragons, an eight-play, 81-yard drive, taking 3:05 off the clock, and the Dragons a 21-7 lead. And Jaquan just continues to get the job done. And I, he wasn't the only Dragon running back that ran hard on Sunday. Saturday. No, no, he um, he did. He continued to get the job done. Had a good game. Thought he played well without the football as well. Um, Kyle had a big game too. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they kind of split. Two weeks carries. in a row, they've both had yeah, big games. Two weeks in a row, they've been pretty even in carries and even in production. And so it's cool for us to be able to see two guys have that same type of uh, that same type of production and then mm -hmm. and then really um, you saw Khalid Crawford get in you saw yep. Marquette Dixon yep. get a carry and so we talk about it each week but we are developing depth I think at that position and and really at, at multiple positions you've seen a bunch of DBs play a bunch of D linemen play um, I'm excited about the depth of our young guys and the experience they've been able to get. You guys have been here for a little while now. Gavin, talk about the depth that this team has. And maybe I'm sure there was depth when you got here, but I'm sure the depth is much greater now than what it was when you first stepped foot on campus. Yeah, um, even over just the summer, I mean, we brought in a few transfers, like talking at the receiver standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, we brought in some re receiver uh, transfers, and it's just added depth there. Uh, it's made, it made our jobs easier in practice. Uh, we can rotate in and then help us out, make us, each one of us better. We talk about the running back position. You mentioned like a guy like Marquette Dixon. There's a lot of teams in the country that like to have a Marquette Dixon on their team. It's just he's got some studs in front of him, man. It's just wait your turn, young man. Just wait your turn. Carrington, you got to face a lot of these different guys in practice as well. Speaking of the depth, like Gavin said on the wide receiving core, a lot of different guys, a lot of different skill sets that has to help you prepare for Saturday afternoons. Oh uh, Yes, definitely. Uh, we have receivers that can run by you, jump over you. And run great routes. Mm -hmm. The quarterback puts the ball in the money, so it's a great practice. It right. Helps all our DBs get better. Well, these the hands on these wide receivers pretty nice as well. Don't see a lot of drop balls on the guys wearing the green and gold out there on Saturday afternoons. So Dragons a 21-7 lead after the first 30 minutes of football, and Dragons come back out in the third quarter. And again, it's Jaquan Hardy this time from 53 yards out. He's had a little bit of a, a history this year of some breaking some long ones for you, which is always nice to see how the running back spot. Now the Dragons have stretched their lead out to three touchdowns at 28-7. Yeah, no, it was good. That was a two-play drive coming out of half. You know, um, 
AB got the ball first. Defense got to stop, forced yep. the three and out, which was huge. Um, ended up forcing, I believe, a bad punt, which got us decent field position. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ended up getting, a, I think, a 12 or 13 yard gain on first down. And then went back to Jaquan on second down. I think the cool thing, and I'm going to brag on our offensive line, you know, we had an injury, and, and so we had a young man, uh, Caleb Pierce, that yeah. hadn't played left tackle before, had to go in at left tackle in the second half. Um, no experience, no playing, nothing, no practice, and went in and on that touchdown run had a tremendous ball awesome. that, spr that sprung Jaquan. So you see Jaquan, and it was a great run. It was great by Blake Darnell, our tight end, but I thought really the thing that you don't see is that Caleb Pierce being able to go in and do a job that – he wasn't really trained for it, but right. he had to listen in meetings, and he had absorbed information, and he was ready for when that minute called. Um, and so I thought that was a cool thing to, to, to mention. It's, you know, you just mentioned how he's got to listen to it all in, in meetings and soak it all in. I'm sure what you see on practice and the way he handles himself in meetings and stuff that made you think that he's the young man I need to put over there to give us the best five across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no doubt. No, he's been a really good player for us at guard. Um, and we actually, consequently enough, in our spring game, uh, we were down a tackle, and he had to go in a left tackle in our spring game that was the last time he did it okay. and um so we knew he he had he could do it right, right? we knew he wouldn't know the calls and and some of the different adjustments and we were able to get by and the guys up front were able to help him out and he did a tremendous job so i think those are kind of those behind the scene things absolutely that, you, know, you see jaquan with a big run of course it's a great play by jaquan but there's a lot of pieces that went into play for that to happen well you know? when I'm, when I'm working the games i gotta follow the ball that's yeah, why i need yeah. you here to throw yeah, yeah that's what we're here for we're a good team kids and talk about that uh, coming out of the locker room how important is it when you're in the defense you know the other team's getting the ball how important is it for you and your other 10 guys out there to go out and make sure you make that statement get that football back for your offense especially if you can do it on a three and out well it's starting on special teams we had to have a great kickoff to get mm -hmm. down there and set the field position and we come out on a mission if we get a stop we know we're getting a score right so well, you did get a score, so yeah, congratulations. I mean, it's awesome. That just sets a tone. Because you know that they're coming out of the locker room thinking, okay, if we get some points on the board here and get a stop ourselves, it's a whole new ball game. We get our momentum going on this side, and then you guys come out there three and out. No, that's not what's happening today. We're going to play Dragon Way, right. Then Jaquan Hardy, well, he gets in the end zone again in the third quarter, this time from 16 yards out of seven play, 59-yard drive, taking just under three minutes off the board. And the Dragons now at 35-7 to as you're heading into the final period of play. And a great block by uh, by the guy sitting to my left That's here on that one. Yeah, Gavin had a touchdown block. So no, Gavin was working his tail off downfield and and uh, ended up ended up sustaining and, and did a tremendous job with the block. You know, and take so us through that play, Gavin. Would you please? Oh, Come on, uh, give us the whole thing. Diagram right. the whole so, play uh, from start to finish. There you go. <laughs> so I believe it was an outside run, and I I knew Quan. All I had to do was hold the block for a couple seconds or so, and he'd make the right cut. So I. I did what I had to do, and Quan did his job. Got How difficult zone. is it yeah, to I block mean, downfield? I mean, I mean, when you get 15, 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage and blocking, I mean, it's got it's not an easy task. Right. I mean, it's it's a little difficult. You got to break down, you know, uh, keep the dude in front of you, and then let the running backs do their job. Right. Sometimes all you got to do is with the quality of running backs, the guys with the ball, all you got to do is get in the way. Sometimes that's, that's right, just yeah. enough enough space to get into the end zone. Absolutely. All right, fourth quarter, A.J. Nikolai put another field goal on the board. We talked about it a couple of weeks yeah. ago, Coach, how he's kind of solidified that kicking game. And I really think that he's kind of – I mean, he's really changed the, the, the face of the team with the way he's taken over that kicking game. Because at the start of the year, it was a bit of a struggle. And yeah. we haven't really worried about it as much here recently. Yeah, no, he's been very reliable. Uh, we look for that to continue, no doubt. Yeah, 35-yard field goal. Dragons up 38-7. to seven, And then – Defense gets a score touchdown. We'll talk to no Coach in here after no this. Doubt. We'll talk to Coach first, and we got to go to the defensive guy. But Patrick Tuame, a 57-yard mm -hmm. touchdown fumble recovery. And, boy, everybody likes to see the defense score a touchdown. A thousand percent. No, and, and the cool thing about this, right, is, is and I say this every week, but we, we recap the scores, right, And because you, that's the flow of the game, right? But the cool thing is the reason we have the ball so much is our defense is getting the ball back, yeah. right? And we had three turnovers, right? We had we had more than, more than enough three and outs that I could even even count. Oh my gosh! Um, yes. And so what it does is it gives the offense multiple chances to score, right? And so that can't get lost in the shuffle that these guys are are doing a tremendous job, mm -hmm. right? Getting off the field on third down and then taking the ball away, right? ATBs attack the ball, um, and and you've seen that really week in week out. And then so it was cool, right, to be able to see the defense one, you know, get the pick. 
right? right. And, and then be able to transition and go score, um, which I thought was, was awesome. So it was. Uh, uh, it was a great hit by Christian Watkins. Yeah. Um, jarred the ball loose, got picked up by, um, by Patrick Twayme. And then, uh, and then I thought we did a tremendous job on defense becoming – we talk about all the time, right? You, you start as a defensive player. Then when you get the turnover, now you're an offensive right. player, right? So now you got to block and you got to protect the football. And so our guys transitioned. They did a tremendous job. You actually saw Watkins, who, who had the block to spring the ball loose, or the, the tackle to spring the ball loose, is downfield 50 yards from that point, leading to get Patrick in the end zone. And so I thought it was really cool. It was awesome. I was excited for the guys to be able to – because a lot of times defensive guys don't show up in that box. Right, they don't. Right, they don't. Right, so to get, to get our defense in the box score, I, I think, is it's what we want. That's what I want every week. You know, I want us all to be able to share in that in – that, and that glory. All defenders kind of salivate when they think about getting themselves in the end zone, don't they? Talk a little bit about senior guy Patrick getting the end zone. Man, we was talking to Pat about this all week. <laughs> about him getting the turnover. You know, it's excited. They see him get in there. Uh, we have guys that anybody can start, like DB-wise. Mm -hmm. We're deep in depth. So every week is a competition in practice as well. So we've gotten better everywhere. And it's just great to see other guys make plays. Well, defensively, you held them to 7 of 19 on third downs. That's only 30-some percent. 12, diff 12 times you were able to get off the field on a third down play. And Coach talked about how many, you know, countless three and outs you guys had last week. And really, the, you really made the offense play to your strengths because you guys controlled that game so much on the defensive side of the ball. And how important, talk a little bit about the importance of just getting off that field on third down and getting that ball back to that offense, which is lighting up the scoreboard. Yeah, it's just, if we get off the field, it gives us hope. And if we let them stay on the field, they get hope and get eager to score. And, yeah, we don't like that. No, we don't like that at all. So, Greg, is a big win, another conference victory. And uh, still uh, sitting there um, waiting for uh, Lake Erie to come this Saturday. we got to go up there to Painesville to take on the storm. But uh, right now, we're, you know, at this point of the season, you got to be feeling pretty good about where your kids are. Yeah, no, I think um – I think proud, but not content. Right. You know, I think uh, I think we're certainly on the right track. I think our guys know that, and I think that um, I think we all see how much room for improvement there is, and, and it's daily improvement. You know, and mm -hmm. and, um, and I think we're eager and uh, trying to attack that improvement with a sense of urgency. And I thought I thought we had a really good week of practice. Our guys. Um, they haven't they haven't leveled off in any regard you know we're we're chasing the greatest version of us you know right. and and um and you see it every day and it's so i mean it's got to be a little good i don't know difficult goofy i don't know how to describe it but you get to this point in the season because you know people are banged up you know you kind of got to work around what you originally thought things may be you know adjustments here or there and wherever you need to do it but talk about some of the challenges of coaching at this point of the season compared to at the start of the season yeah, I mean, I think you're trying to manage bodies, right? You're trying to manage um, health as much as you right. can, you know, and, and we try and be really cognizant of that, you know, and I think um, I think our, our players trust that, that we as a staff, we're not going to run them in the dirt. Right. You know, we're going to get the work that we need to get in, and um, if we can pull back, we'll pull back, and if we need to if we need to move on, we'll move on, you know. And so, every year's different. Uh, every year's different. Every day's different, you right. know, and so uh, trying to really kind of listen to these guys and get the pulse of the team, and then I think really as you get deeper into the season it's um at times you you get engulfed in the season you know and and, and you you sometimes uh you sometimes lose track of the big picture right? right of making sure that you're managing the program that you're managing the football team you're managing the people you know and not just the player and so we've tried to really be cognizant of still relationship build still managing our guys still making sure that that um that, that them as men is the most important thing that we do. Well, let's go ahead and meet these young men. Let's start with you first, Gavin. How you doing tonight, bud? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're Thank from you. just down the road, just off of State Route 53, Cary High School, right? That's right, yep. So let's talk about the path that brought you to Tiffin. Let's say first Cary High School, but you, you had to play basketball, I bet, too. Yep. You know, were sports in high school? I, I ran track as well. Ran track, played basketball, played football. Yes, sir. Cary, I think, is having a pretty good year this year. Yeah, I think I think, so. I think, I think it was Cynic East. Yeah. But, yeah, but, yep. uh, all right, so let's talk about the path that got you to be a Tiff University Dragon. Uh, so I didn't really get heavily recruited out of high school, but um, uh, I visited Tiffin and Finley and the National, and then obviously my uncle uh, played here at Tiffin, and so that was a big leading uh, contribution to, to get here, obviously. And then so that and then being that close to home, so I really wanted right. to come. After I visited Tiffin, I really wanted to come here. And so I came here, and then uh, – I was given the opportunity to play, and then ever since then it's been good. So, 
Well, your production has really taken a leap this year, as uh, you know, over last year, you we were a contributor last year, but this year you're really getting leaned on. Right. We talk about you in the broadcast, we, uh, we mentioned it's kind of like Mr. Consistent for the Dragons. Like, you kind of like whenever somebody needs to be in the right spot, it always seems like it's Gavin Woods who's there. And that's probably why I put you back there in the punt return thing, too, because of the yep. trust that you have from Coach Rice. And Absolutely, yeah. And what, do you enjoy the punt return game? I do, I do. It's, yeah. it's nerve-wracking at times, but I, I definitely enjoy doing that and trying to make a play when I can. So Right, because you, you know, special teams, a big punt return, even not even to the house, but just flipping field position. You know, the team you know, punted to you guys, and they think they got the field position. All of a sudden, you bring it back 30, 40 yards, and it cha- flip-flops field position. That changes everything for your offense. Yeah, field position is a huge thing in this game, and then – Coach always says if we can control the field position, that's that's a huge uh, factor in winning the games. How was it working with Nick? It's it's great. Nick's a great guy. He, he puts the ball where it needs to be, and it's it's fun working with him every day in practice. Coach, I'm sure you should see uh, Gavin and his fellow receiving core working with Nick Watson on a daily basis. I'm sure that they put in tons of work to be able to do what they do out there in the football field. Just elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. No, I, I don't think, you know, it's like anything, right? You see the finished product, and, and these guys are putting countless hours in the summer, countless hours in the season, in the off season, to develop consistency, to develop a relationship, right. to get comfortable with one another. And funny, I, I, you know, to brag on him, you know, when we were trying to figure out the punt returner thing, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I – Walked up, we I, we had told Gavin, hey, go back and catch some punts. And I remember walking up to him and I said, hey, you're going to be the guy. And I said, have you ever returned punts before? You know, I didn't <laughs> After know. You said you're going to be the guy. I said, you're, you're the guy. I said, you're, by the way, have you ever done this? <laughs> and um, and he was like, coach, I went to carry. I did everything. Right? <laughs> and so he was like, I played everything. Coach. Right. Of course I've done this. So so at that point I was like, you know, you're right. right. You're good. Here we go. Right. So, but it was um, it was it was assuring for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk a little bit. What's your what's your favorite thing on the football field? What's just what is it about it that just draws you to it? I'm honestly just being with my brothers. Uh, like I consider my teammates, my brothers, being out there having fun, making plays. Uh, Saturdays, it's just, you put all the worries aside. It's just go out, have fun, and and then play together. I mean, it's just it's fun. It's, it's like that in all sports. But I really think it's more so in football. That, I mean, you, every sport talks about the brotherhood, but football, the things you go through. The, I mean, the physical toll on your body, and the, the emotional toll. Right. Hey, you know, you go through everything. I, I really think that the football seems to be a little bit tighter knit group. You know, guys that we played here, like, you sure you have your high school buddies that you play football with that you still talk to. And these college guys you play with, you'll be talking to these guys for the next 30, 40 years after you've Absolutely, done here. Absolutely, yes. So what are you studying? I'm studying finance, okay. minor management. And what's your uh, plans when you have to take the pads off? Um, I'm interested in uh, corporate finance. Okay. And, but I want to see where my internship and opportunities take me, but not for sure yet. You like money. Nothing set in stone. You like money. Yes. Yeah. I, I like dealing with money. <laughs> you like numbers, money. Yeah. All right, and let's go to Carrington. Carrington, how are you, bud? Pretty good. You're not from around here. You're from, is it Maryland? Yes. You're from Maryland. So let's talk about your path again. Well, first, did you play other sports in high school? I played basketball, baseball, dabbled in lacrosse, but I got out of it so I can play baseball. Football's your thing, though, right? Football is my thing. All right, tell us about the path about you here. Uh, I was getting recruited for basketball, like D3, some D2s, all walk ons for football. And I came across Tiffin, and I was just Ohio. Took a, I signed before I visited. Really? No, knew nothing about the school. So what was your reaction when you got here? My reaction was like, I didn't expect it to be like this. Like, I thought it was going to be a big college town. I get here, I'm like, oh, it's like <laughs> one street. Right. But, I mean, it's close-knit, you know, no car, easy to get around, you know. It was great-knit. Well, Everything, every university is what you make of it. You know, it's the people you surround yourself with. It's the things you decide to get involved with, whether it's football and outside of football, clubs and organizations and everything. I talked to a lot of people, you know, through my work here on the campus, and, you know, they were weren't real sure about what Tiffin was before they got here, but by the time they left, they sure were happy that they came here and took this as their spot for their higher education. Definitely. All right, you're defensive back. Talk about some of the guys you play with back there. You got some guys who are some big playmakers out there. Oh, yeah. Um, got, I mean, Bullhawks. Talk I about got, you guys. I got Ross Moore, you know, solid starter, been there four years, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got uh, Tyler Richardson, we transferred mm-hmm. in, you know, but over the summer he came up here to get some work in, and we've been getting together, knowing each other ever since. Kevin Hyde, another two year starter, played, he's a great defender, corner, safety, yeah. whatever you need him. De- Dejon Morgan, uh, 
what it is. There's plenty. I mean, there's well, Christian Watkins. Christian Watkins. Yeah, lots of guys out there are making plays for you guys. We're like ten deep. I like guess. Right. I, I name a whole roster. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, like we said before, you can't do your job if the guys up front aren't doing theirs. Our defensive line's been great all year long. Definitely. The linebackers were just flying to the ball this past week as well. So your defense as a whole has been fantastic so far this year. I mean, look at the conference standings. We're at the top offense and defense. Yes. You know, but talk about, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your defense as a whole and, uh, and your, uh, your defense coordinator. Talk about the work you guys all put in together to get ready for Saturday afternoons. Uh, we put in and we put in good time in film. Like, it's no joking around and we really be interested in learning every day. And I think the effort we put into learning and the effort we put in that practice, it matches and it makes us great. Uh, now, I don't get, very often get guys who would be, like, opposite each other, possibly, you know, on the practice field. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to start with you. Talk to me, tell me a little bit about what Carrington's strengths are on the field as you see him from your perspective. Uh, Conti's a hard hitter. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, if I'm if I'm running the slant or something, I'm, I'm going to have my head up looking where he's coming before, down. Where's 11 before the boss? Where's exactly, 11? Yeah. Okay, there he is. Absolutely, yeah. All right, same question for you, Carrington. If the ball in the air, like, don't look back, or you could be on ESPN, Instagram, <laughs> who knows, you know. But, I mean, he's a great player, and he's very dependable. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, guys, we got Lake Erie this weekend. We're going up there, a team that uh, has won three of the last four games, Coach. And they played a uh, one of the losses earlier in the year was, uh, I guess, a pretty good Davenport team that they played pretty well. So this is a team that, you know, has really improved tremendously from where they were last year. No, this is a whole different team. Yeah. You know, um, a whole different team. You know, I think the, the new staff there has done a really good job coming in and kind of changing the mentality of the kids. They play hard. Um, they've got a ton of transfers. They got a, a lot of a lot of fresh new faces that are right. playing good football. Um, I think they're they're good on defense. Have a really good defensive lineman uh, on offense. They've got a you know a four year starter quarterback. Yeah. They've got a transfer running back that that's a really good player. And so we certainly have to play to our potential. You know, and uh, we've got to play we got to play a really sound football game, which we plan on doing. Um, um, but we certainly know that uh, we've got to play well and we've got to play our type of game uh, to do what we want to do on Saturday. Carrington always comes down. It doesn't come down to what the Lake Erie is going to do. It comes down to what the guys, your brothers in the green and gold are going to do, what the Dragons are going to do every Saturday. Is that how you approach it? Uh, yes. If I believe we come with the same mindset, how we practice every week and how we play on Saturdays, it, it shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't change. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Gavin, do you like going out on down on, out on the road with your with your guys, kind of getting away from everything? I mean, everybody loves playing at home because, yeah. you know, you get friends and family can come, you get back to your place real nice and early. But sometimes going on the road and hanging out with your with your guys and getting away from things is, you know, is, is kind of fun, you know, the camaraderie, all that stuff, the team building aspect, but sometimes getting away. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I do. It's it's definitely fun uh, going and traveling with your with your teammates and stuff, uh, staying in the hotel, you know, going into each other's uh-huh. rooms. And then, uh, and then the next day, obviously, game day, and then going into battle so yeah it's it's definitely fun i enjoy it i enjoy playing the game yeah so yeah, you don't care where it is just yeah. give, I mean, it's give me a helmet and give me a saturday and i'm a happy guy right that's right yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> so coach we said this saturday drag is up at lake erie and uh I mean, uh, you aren't gonna give me any for any secrets or anything but folks uh tune in for the game on saturday tell us a little bit about what they're gonna see from your kids I hope they see the same thing they see every week, right? We'll be a hard-playing football team. We'll play with a bunch of passion. We'll play for each other. You know, we'll play with a bunch of uh, bunch of energy. And I think we'll be a fun team to watch. You know, and I think you're going to see a team that will that will hit you. You know, right. and that's the cool thing as you watched us is is we're going to attack. Yeah, well, yeah, they will hit you. That guy right there will hit you really quickly as well. That's why we bring them. Right. So next week, Coach, we have a bye after this week, right? Are we coming back here on Wednesday night for the uh, the bye week? If we have to discuss that, we let our, our, our fans uh, yeah. know. No, we'll have to figure that one out. All right, well, we'll pay attention that to, we to our, figure that out as yeah. we go. Pay attention to our, uh, our social media pages at WTUDTUDragonRadio.com, and we'll let you know whether we'll be on next Wednesday or not. If not, then maybe I'll just put together a little something to put out there can do that. for our fans to listen to on Wednesday night as well. Guys, anybody want to say hi to before we close up the program? Uh, just say hi to my family and friends back home. All right, Kate? Yeah, same. Hi to my family and friends back home. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out here. First of all, I appreciate you guys being on the Dragon football team and allowing me the opportunity to go out and cover you guys and call your games. It's a pleasure watching you guys compete and keep up the great work, man. It's a fun ride, and I sure do enjoy this Saturday afternoon. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. All right, Coach, same thing to you, man. It's always a blast, and it's always fun getting with you on Wednesday nights. Let's go out Saturday and get another one. Let's do it. Go Dragons. All right, you can catch the game on the radio at tudragonradio.com, WTUD, as well as at Coast Country 100.9 on your FM dial. Video link will be available on the 
Tiffin football schedule on the Go Tiffin Dragons website. Till next week, I'm Russ Snyder, Coach Chris Reiser. We'll catch you next time on the Tiffin Dragon Football Radio Show. Bye-bye, everybody.